Okay, affiliates that do these three things always fail, drives me insane. So we're gonna go into it and really help you figure out what you can avoid so you can actually have success in the long term as an affiliate marketer. Okay, big thing out of the gate, um, affiliates that don't do this, listening to the data. If you're not looking at the data and understanding what it's telling you for your campaigns and for your traffic and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna be at a huge disadvantage to people that understand how to grok that pretty well, right? And here's what I mean. Um, let's say, for example, you are running a campaign, right, new campaign, um, and it's not working. And you start split testing the headline, the image creative, the byline, um, you change the pre-sale lander headline of the image, and you're doing all these things to try to improve it. What's the issue here? You don't know what one thing is affecting the actual change and moving the needle, right? A lot of people that split test, often when they're starting out, split test way too much to start or they don't split test at all. The healthy medium here is um, be able to split test very specific and big things. So you actually know what caused the difference there. And that's what helps you learn for the long run, right? So if I was split testing something, I would start at the highest part of the funnel that's not working. So let's say the ad creative isn't getting a good click-through rate. What's the best, you know, what's the biggest and best part of the ad? It's likely either the headline or the image or and or video if you're using video, right? Um, and if it's video, probably the first, you know, five to 15 seconds of that video is what's probably broken, right? So what I would try testing is one of those three things, either completely different images with the same headline, either very different headlines with the same image creatives, um, and, and go from there, right? So. What people will do is like, oh, I split test, I changed the color of the headline from red to blue. That, no, like, <laughs> that's, that's not gonna work. Like, that will get you a very incremental change. <laughs> that's something you try split testing when it's at scale, right? When something's scaling, that's when you start messing with colors. Um, what you need to be testing is completely different headlines and hooks and angles, because then you're gonna get an idea of, oh, okay, this is not, this one, option A, is not resonating with the audience. Option B is res resonating much better. Let's make this the control now. And then we'll try split testing something even different from that, right? And you might find, while B was better, it still wasn't great, and C is actually the winner, and that's your new control, and so on and so forth. And now you've got C headline out there in the wild, and you're gonna take the image now and revamp the image into something completely different and, and, right, and go from there. And that's how you got, start to see these really sexy numbers going from, oh, I split tested my campaign, and it improved by 50%, 100%, et cetera. Because right, that's how you start to get those big needle movers. Um, but that's where if you're not listening and looking at the data, you won't really know where to test either. And that's where I see people struggling. They're going, oh, it's not working, right? This doesn't work. Um, and really, it's, there's some clear things in the data that can often jump out at you. Maybe the funnel, for example, maybe the top line funnel ad creative is working quite well. And then you're seeing no, um, let's say you're not seeing very many order form impressions, right? You're just getting a decent amount of clicks to the offer sale page right, or hops if you're looking at ClickBank, um, but then you're not seeing very, very many order form impressions. What is that telling you, right? It's probably telling you there's a mis mismatch somewhere, either with the audience that's hitting that offer page, or it's a mismatch with how you're framing the offer before the audience is getting there, and it's not what they're expecting, so they're bouncing. A lot of affiliates will blame the offer. Oh, that offer doesn't convert. Well, if you're pulling from the top, you know, 10 pages of the ClickBank marketplace, it should convert pretty well for the right traffic. Right, so you're either not framing the offer correctly or you're sending the wrong type of audience to that offer if you're not getting order form impressions and they're not converting through that sales page and clicking on buy and hitting the order form, right? So those are some examples of ways you're gonna look at the data. The actual way you do it will change depending on what you're actually doing and kind of what traffic you're using, but it's understanding how to split test and how to leverage that data in a big way. The next big thing, right, is if you're doing this kind of thing, it puts you at a disadvantage when you're bouncing from offer to offer or tactic to tactic too quickly, right? And the issue here is that it doesn't allow you to go deep and it doesn't allow you to invest the, enough time to actually fully test an offer or a tactic or strategy, right? So if you're gonna go, I'm gonna try Facebook ads, you throw up an ad, you, you watch a YouTube video and figure out how to do it, you put it up there and all of a sudden it's just like not and it just doesn't work in the first day or week, you know, ah, Facebook ads don't work. <laughs> of course they work. <laughs> right? Facebook is a billion, you know, billions of dollars of a company, um, all off ads. Facebook ads work just fine, right? Um, 
be able to stick with something if you really want to learn how to do it. And if you know an offer is a top, you know, it's, is a top offer, you know the offer converts. It's not the offer's problem. Um, so put the time and energy into like figuring out why it's not working. Now, you know, if you're beating yourself up over weeks and it's like really not working, okay, maybe it's not a good fit for you or your traffic and things like that, move on, right? But don't just move on. Okay, that doesn't work and scrap it. Um, and then this last one, it's not having grit. And what do I mean by grit here? Grit is perseverance, it's process, it's understanding that this is a long road to hoe for people, right? Um, there's very few true overnight successes in this industry, right? People learn over time. Uh, think about it like, if you want, like me, right? I wanna lose some weight. <laughs> COVID hit me in a big way, not health-wise, just me sitting on the couch all day, <laughs> not going outside. Um, so I wanna lose 20 pounds, right? I know that that doesn't happen in a day or a week or a month, right? It's gonna take a series of months of me eating you know, healthier foods and less food, working out more uh, every day for me to reach that eventual goal, right? And this is where people get frustrated. They, they don't have the grit to stick with it and kind of build up that process day over day and start spinning that flywheel bit by bit until it's really gained momentum. They'll just kind of give up. Um, ways that this can be, good ways this can be viewed at is right is like investing in some education right people don't want to do it they want to figure out how to do it themselves and learn but they don't want to invest in mentors or courses things like that right um you know do your due diligence and research the courses you're interested in right but they can be a great way to really invest in yourself another metaphor right might be if you want to be a software engineer right and let's say you want to be a you know six figure earning software engineer at google that doesn't happen overnight. You got to go to, often you have to go to school, you have to learn how to code, learn different languages and code, right? And actually figure out and I usually work at a few other places before you can get hired by a big place like that, right? It doesn't just happen. <laughs> um, you have to invest in yourself, invest in education, go through the day-to-day -day process of getting better every day and really have that grit to get through the tart, the, the hard beginning phase, because it is hard, right? I did kettlebell swings the other day for the first time in six months. My hamstrings are killing me today, right? <laughs> that'll get, I know that'll get better, right, as I keep doing them, but it's hard to start, and you need that grit to get through and punch through. If you don't have it, you need to figure out how to get it and really stick with it. So those are the three things that affiliates, if you're not, if you are doing them, you're gonna really struggle to get off the ground and get going. So look at yourself, look internally at what you're doing, figure out where you can improve every day and really listen to the data, learn how to split test better, um, stop bouncing so quickly from offer to offer, tactic to tactic, go a bit deeper into things before giving up and then use grit, right? To really get through the hard starting phases and really stick with it, build habits, build processes, help yourself get better every day for the rest of your life. Happy scaling, y'all. Let me know what questions you have in the comments below.